everyone, it's Robert Evans, and we are here at Oshkosh 2019, the 50th anniversary, and we are gonna shoot airplanes with the Sony 400 2.8 G Master on the A9, and we're gonna pit it against the Sony RX10 IV that has a 600 millimeter lens in it. So it's 24 to 600 millimeter at F4, and this one's 400 at 2.8. So we're gonna shoot with both cameras and compare them. Here we go, welcome to the Pixel Show. Hello everyone and welcome back into the Pixel Show. I'm your host, Robert Evans, and today we really have uh, interesting show. We're kind of going to do a combo show um, from something that we normally do. But uh, let's start out. We're going to do uh, with what lens should I get, except today uh, it's what lens slash camera should I get? Because the comparison that I'm going to make today, normally it's one item, but we are going to compare the RX10 IV to the 400 millimeter 2.8. Now that doesn't really sound like a very fair comparison, right? And uh, quality-wise, uh, there is a big difference. And price-wise, there is a big difference, but there are a lot of similarities, and there's a lot of advantages to this RX10. I really love this camera, but we are comparing a $1,600 camera and lens combo to a $16,000 camera and lens combo. The A9 is roughly $38,000, $4,000. is $12,000. You add some tax to that and you are much more than $16,000. So let's just jump right in. The difference between the two is clearly quality wise. First is the sensor. The RX10 IV has a one inch sensor. It has a CMOS sensor, but it's 24 frames per second, which is actually faster than the A9, which is only 20 frames a second but the RX10 is 20 megapixels and the A9 is 24. So here, uh, the A9 does have a full frame sensor at 20 frames a second and 24 megapixels. It's also a stacked back illuminated sensor. So this is a new technology when this camera came out. Uh, this is one of my favorite bodies, especially when I'm shooting action in sports. And I'm really anticipating and hoping that the rumors are true, that the A92 is coming out soon. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. So I'm not going to get too, too technical. I just want to kind of compare a few of the specs. So the RX10, as far as the phase detection points, there's 315 that cover 65% of the image area and 25 contrast detection points as opposed to the A9 has 693 phase detection and 425 contrast points. Now bigger sensor, bigger space to add those points. But the focusing system that they put into the RX10 is very similar and was based off the A9. Two of the things, well, a few of the things that they have common, they both have the same processor. They both have silent shutter. They both have 4K video. Now, uh, those are just a few things. Again, I'm not going to dive into all the different specs about the camera. I just want to show you some things that I think are important to people because with cameras with long lenses, silent shutter is important, especially if you're a nature shooter. You want to be able to shoot when it's quiet. And 4K video. A lot of people want video in their cameras. And, and I'm not going to show you 4K video today from the RX10, but it is absolutely beautiful. It's really, it really surprises me. I know several of the other artisans who actually use this camera. Bob Kirst is one of them, um, who loves the RX10 4 and shoots 4K video with it. So you saw in the intro, I went to Oshkosh. Oshkosh is the world's biggest air show. It happens every year. And this year happened to be the 50th anniversary. So this was the opening sequence to the first day air show. But I want to just draw your attention before I jump into a little more. If you haven't seen any of our episodes, if this is your first one, please go check out some of our episodes. Like everyone, like, subscribe, but especially check out a couple of these lower ones. The previous uh, What Lens Should I Get was on the 2414. And we're also doing now uh, quick mini tips on how to in the Sony menu. So we're uh, showing you just really quick videos on how to do things in the Sony menu video. We're giving you little tips on how to do things within your Sony menu. So the one here is setting up your copyright info on your files. So anyway, go back and check those out. Let's move on. 
So Oshkosh. I mentioned it's the world's biggest air show, and it's been going on for 50 years. It started in Milwaukee and uh, has been, I believe, in uh, Wisconsin, which is where it is. It's just off the shores of Lake Winnebago uh, and very close to Lake Michigan, close to Milwaukee, close to Chicago. So if you've never been, you love aviation, you're just curious, it's literally a week long. You can't get a hotel room within an hour or two hours away, so everyone pretty much camps. There's about, if I remember correctly, like 1,200 to 1,500 acres of camping. It's $28 a day, but it's a great week. It's, it's fun. There's people everywhere. I'm going to just show you a few images, but uh, these are some of my favorites. These were taken with the 400, of course. The clarity and the crispness of the 400 is very apparent when we're, we're looking at the two different files, but in some cases not. You just have to see for yourself and judge for yourself. This is the F-22 Raptor flying, but just beautiful. I mean, the detail from the 400 and the A-9 in that sensor of just, you, you know, you could feel like you could reach out and touch that airplane. They started off the show with some skydivers. It was a beautiful day on the first day of the air show. They do an air show every single day, and there's two night shows. And uh, just a little hint, we're going to do another episode on the 4028 at night. So shooting a, a telephoto with a 28 and being able to use it at night. So that's coming up too. Look for that. So this first image, beautiful, crisp, clean. I was just really impressed. I've only had the 400 for a couple months now. I've shot some of my son's baseball with it. So I was super excited to be able to take it with me to Wisconsin and shoot an air show with it. I've shot air shows before. My son loves aviation. And uh, we went two years ago and spent three days. And this was our second time going. Uh, so we really had a good time. These are the same airplanes with the backside of them. Just beautiful weather we had the first day. Uh, the shows start around two o'clock in the afternoon and go till six. Um, and so we just had great weather, great light. Uh, you can just see, like, you can see the pilot's face. This is a woman. You can actually see her face in there smiling as she's doing the air show. Patty Wagstaff is her name. Uh, I got to meet her last year because my other friend, Jeff Berlin, who's a Sony artisan, is a pilot and uh, used to be an editor uh, for a lot of the big aviation magazines. So he knows all these people. So it was fun to get to meet some of them last time that we went. Uh, this is the F-35 Raptor. But look how clean this is. You know, this is the plane flying down the runway. This image, you'd think that I was in an airplane next to him flying along. But just, just beautiful. You know, you need that 20 frames a second because they're coming 600 miles an hour, 500 miles an hour, you know, and you're just clicking off images as they're flying down the runway at a, on a low pass. All right, now we're going to jump over to the RX-10 IV. So the great thing about this camera is that it can do everything. It's like having an entire camera bag uh, over your shoulder. Um, I just take my strap, I throw it over my shoulder, I take this camera with me everywhere uh, because it's so flexible and so versatile. Um, so here, so this is 24, this is as wide as the camera shoot. I'm on the ground, I'm shooting the, uh, I'm shooting the plane and just to give you the perspective of what I was seeing. But this is how far I can zoom in. This is the same exact plane that was flying in the previous shot but I can zoom all the way in this far. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, to have this range in your camera, and I know you see it, but it's f4 all the way up to 600 millimeters. That's pretty darn good for a 600 millimeter lens. And it's all built in. Uh, it's a Zeiss lens. Um, and the other great thing is that you'll never get dust on your sensor because you don't change the lens. It's all compact. Uh, this is the Oracle Challenger. Uh, flying. Uh, again, we had beautiful weather, beautiful colors. But look, I mean, you see the quality of the lens. I mean, just because it's a one-inch sensor. Now, for a, a professional photographer, I mean, I'm a professional photographer. I've been a photographer for 30 years, and I love this camera. I think this is the camera that, that everyone should actually own, no matter what brand you shoot, because it's so convenient to have the range that you do with 24 to 600 millimeters. Now this is a pan that I did when the plane landed. So uh, as you see the XF, some of these I put XF so you could see what I was doing, but it's a 25th of a second at F4 at 250th. And I'm just moving the camera, which you have to as the plane's coming in because it's coming in fast. So uh, I got this beautiful image. There were about three or four that I shot uh, and this was uh, my favorite. So that's why I'm showing it to you. 
Now, this is the Red Bull helicopter. Um, this guy is nutty. He flies upside down and does rolls and loops. And, and, uh, but the point that I want to show you here, again, is the zoom. Like, this helicopter has to be really high in the air for these skydivers to come out of it. Um, and look how close I can get, you know, and actually catch the action as the skydivers leaving the airplane. The Red Bull airplane, beautiful, vibrant, bright colors. Um, you know, again, I can't say enough about this camera. So now let's do a few comparisons. Um, so this, you'll see in the corner which camera it is. This is the RX-10 IV. And then a similar shot, this is the 400. So a little bit different lighting. These were shot on different days, but to give you the perspective, you definitely see more detail in the water from the 400 and the A9 as you should, right? Here is two similar images. This is the F-22 Raptor, and then this is the F-22 with the 400. So again, you can see the clarity, you know, in the video, I'm not sure, but like looking at these images on my monitor, of course, and when I'm zooming in on them, there's definitely a quality difference, but it's not that huge. And my point again is, is not to argue with all you guys that like, well, yes, it's much better. But for the person, not everybody can afford a camera and a lens combo that's $16,000. But for $1,600, you can get an amazing camera that does everything. So here's another example. So here's the pilot of the F-22 driving by as he was coming down uh, the jetway passing in front of me with the 400 and then with the RX-10. So a little different zoom and angle, but the, but the quality is a little bit different. Even in the airplane on the metal, you can tell the difference. Here we are again, RX-10-4. This is a C-31 firefighting plane. And then same shot, different angle. But again, you just see a little more Christmas and clarity in the 400 and detail in the water. Now, here's another thing. I showed you the difference between how far it zoomed in and how tight you can get. But this is an example of that. But this is what you can do in a quick second. So this guy was standing by his plane. Now, I forget which airplane this is. Um, if you remember or you know, you can put it in the comments. But there's only one of this airplane, I guess, that flies in existence, supposedly. And so I saw the pilot standing there and on his plane, I thought, oh, what a great portrait. And then I shot that. Look at the time, 10.31.13. And then I zoomed in, 10.31.52, and I got that portrait. I mean, even if you had to change lenses in your camera, you never would have got that. And he actually got down shortly after that. So I didn't have a whole lot of time. I love having the range of, you know, the tight to the mid to the wide to shoot what I want in a quick instance. Both of them take beautiful images. Again, here's another image from the RX-10. Uh, this is what they call a heritage flight, where the F-22, the F-35, I think it's a P-31, the back plane uh, is a warthog. I forget the number for it. Um, but beautiful angle, just tilting enough, just getting kissed a little bit with the sun. And again, a 400 image, uh, but you can just see the pilot's face. This guy's name is Bill Stein. He's an amazing aerobatic pilot. And I took a great image of him with it upside down two years ago. And uh, so I wanted to make sure. His plane's really cool too. No matter which, it turns different angles. In one angle, it's purple. One angle, it's blue. One angle, it's pink. It's really interesting. So kind of to wrap this up, you know, when it's time to buy a camera, I understand most people don't have $16,000. That's why I'm making this comparison to show you that for $1,600, you can get a camera that pretty much does everything. And again, I do everything with this camera. You can guess which camera I took with it. If Let me show it to you bigger. The one saying that I've always loved, the best camera is the one that you have with you. And I take this camera, I walk my kids to the bus stop, that's how I got this image. Uh, we live very close to water and I walk by the lake every morning after I drop them off and I see this eagle in the tree and I'd been stalking him and I'm like, so this is one image of about 50 frames that I took. Because remember, this camera shoots 24 frames a second. Uh, but this was my favorite one just after he grabbed the fish out of the water. Um, now not every single image was super tack sharp, 
Um, because again, it's 20 frames a second, I'm moving, you know, but I followed him as he swirled around, came down, grabbed the fish, came out of the water and flew away. So that's why I have about 50 frames. But there's so much you can do with this camera. Uh, you could shoot nature with it. Uh, I shoot my kids' performances. So I have kids in band. Uh, I have kids that do theater. And so I purposely go and I sit in the back and I sit up high if I can, all the way in the top row so that I have a better vantage point at the stage. And then I can zoom all the way in. The stage lights are great. Um, so I just use the natural lighting on the stage and it works perfectly. Sometimes I'll shoot it for sports, but usually I use my A9 um, if I want something really fast. Like I've done in the past, I've taken it to my son's baseball games and I'll go out in the outfield and I'll shoot over the outfield fence and zoom into the batters and either shoot video or, or a bunch of stills of the boys batting so the coach can see uh, their swing. Um, I take this when I travel um, because I used to like, I bet this is you. You travel, you're going someplace, and you have your camera bag, and you have this camera, and you have this lens, you have a wide, you have a tight, you have a telephoto. You, you bring like all these lenses, your camera bag's 500 pounds, or at least 60, because you might need that lens. And you walk around all day, and you're shooting pictures, and you're carrying this heavy camera bag, and maybe you use one or two lenses. I completely stopped doing that, unless there's specifically something I'm shooting, and you know, I'm shooting uh, you know, that I want to blow up of, that I might use my, you know, A7R3. Um, but I take this camera, I just throw it around my neck on a strap, I, like a, a harness, it's light. I hardly know it's there and I use it and just walk around and enjoy and then I can do street photography, I can do whatever. So you get that I'm a big fan of this camera. So I just wanted to make this comparison for you guys so that you could see the difference and and really say if you've never looked at the rx10 it's a camera that sony doesn't really push out there too much it's it's considered a prosumer camera but really go out and check out the uh, rx10 4 uh, again rumored that there might be a new one coming out so maybe before christmas we'll see the five i'm excited about that and to see what else they've done to it but until then follow us on social media please uh, subscribe and like our channel if you enjoyed this episode. Tell your friends about it. We're on Instagram at The Pixel Show, Twitter. We have a Facebook page. So appreciate you being here. I'm Robert Evans. I'm your host. And thank you for watching this episode of What Lens Should I Get? Slash Camera.